What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first piece of content you guys are seeing on Bleacher Talk Baseball. But you guys probably know this is the batter's eye, and we'll still keep it as that. We're going to post on both for the meantime. But I'm Aiden, and I'm here with a guest of ours, the first guest for the 2025 college – or, yeah, 2025 college baseball season. It took me a minute to process that in my head. But introduce yourself. Tell us, you know, who you are, where you're from, and we'll get right into this. Uh, yeah, I'm Ty Daly. Um Outfielder, first base at Mercer University. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Anytime, first of all. Of course, we'll have you whenever you want. We'll come. We'll have you on back. We'll do a season sure. episode, and sure. we'll, we'll be doing all of this. So, yeah, like you said, you're, from Mer- you're at Mercer this year. And first thing we'll get into, just because, you know, I like to see what people think about, about my content as well. I want to see where people stand with some of the stuff that I've done. So we worked on a, a draft profile for you. You've seen it, obviously. It's up on Instagram, but we have the grades. We'll, we'll run through the grades right here, and we'll see. You know, if you agree, if you if you want to reposition it, and we'll we'll put it there. It's and I have I don't take anything to heart, so this is all just for fun. Yeah, let's do it. Let's so we'll put it in there for the hitting grade. I gave you a fifty. It's a plus hit grade. I think it's all there. The tool is there, but you know, you the number the numbers might the numbers might say hi. You yeah, tell me I mean, where it, it, it's one of those tools. I mean, I've, I've had it, but it's, it's slowly but surely pro- progress on every single year. So, I mean, I, I think this year it, we, we might take it up a little bit because, I mean, I've been working on bats of all bit. That's been my kind of my big focus. I've had the pop for like for two straight years here. So the bat to balls obviously got to go up for to get ready for the next level. But uh, I think that's going to be one of my main focuses and what I've got better at. So, yeah, that might, yeah, that might I pick mean, up after we go. We, we, yeah, we've definitely, we talked about this too. And guys, I'm going to be making draft profiles for, I'm not going to say everyone I've made because there's some people that I probably won't redo another one for. But I think for the most part, I'm going to try at the end of the season, I'm going to get every first round pick. We're going to make an updated profile. There's going to be new grades, going to be changes from the season. And like you said, you know, the bat to ball skill is improving. And we'll talk about this a little bit right now as it's on the topic. As a freshman, you came in and you did very well. You hit 269 and you had 18 home runs. It was a freshman record for Mercer at the time. And now yeah. you improved to hitting 316. Obviously, like you said, you worked on the basketball last offseason and going into this offseason. I mean, what's something we can expect from you? And not just numbers wise, but, you know, more of something that we can visualize and understand. Uh, yeah, I mean, going into this year, I think kind of the, the big thing is uh, it, it is it is bat to ball. So, I mean, I think uh, obviously strikeouts got to go down, walks got to go up. That's kind of the big a big thing that scouts and everyone else is looking at. But, uh, I mean, so far this fall, I think my ratio is uh, more walks than strikeouts. My bat to ball has been really good. So, I think that's just got a lot to do with really getting my pitch to hit and not like kind of hitting it because I can and hitting it waiting for that two oh three one count where I can do damage instead of hitting that. A one 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 count where I really don't want to swing at a pitch that I don't need to. So, yeah, and something that I'll get into with that is also I think picking and choosing your your spots better and being able to improve in that also leads to a lot more power pitches that you're going to want to see in the zone that you could drive outside. So, with that being said, we'll move to the power grade where you got you graded in pretty high. You got a sixty. It's a very very good grade there. Plus tool. Plus power, I project I project a 25, 30 home run player in the future. I like it. Where do you think we're going? I, I mean, 21 at Mercer last year. You could be a 25 home run player this year. And like you're saying, oh. if you're picking your spots, I think I think you can get there. The power might have to go up. Power oh. might be 65. Facts. I mean, it, it can always go up. And, and at the beginning of last year, I kind of – I kind of started a little rougher than I than I wanted to, but I mean, if you look at like the back half of last year, I put up. I mean, it was it was around. I think it was like fifteen plus just in the back half of last year. So if I mean, if yeah. I can complete season being dialed in, I mean, I think we can we can hopefully look for another twenty plus. If I can mix that with a little bat to ball, we'll be in good shape. I think I I thought. I was going to say we're going to shoot for, for 25, 30 range, picking oh, spots. Yeah. Now, if, if, it, if we're shooting for it and I'm down, I think, yeah, 25, 30 for sure. That's in there, no doubt. 25, 30, I think 30 leads college baseball this year. Hey, that's it. That's the goal. When it yes. ends, I'd love to be at the top of it. There ain't no doubt. Sleeper, I think sleeper my power, runner, I mean, if, you, if you look year to year, I think, I mean, numbers-wise, you look year to year, I think my power is right up there with anybody else in the country. So, I mean, 
There ain't no doubt. This year, this year, from my from from everything I've looked at, all the evaluating I've done, I have to agree with that. Some uh, of the some of the longest, some of the hardest hit home runs we've seen in college baseball out of these guys. So now, as a hitter, you know you're very very advanced. Like I said, you hit 316. You're hitting for the pop as well. But what's something that in the last couple of years at Mercer that you've been able to really dial in on that maybe on the high school circuit you didn't have? Just like obviously at these big schools, you have these level of coaching and this level of attention that you get on you that is undescribable for these guys that are in this high school level. And it's it's very life changing because it leads you to these opportunities like getting drafted and everything. But what's something behind the scenes that you've been really hard at work on that you want to kind of showcase in your game? Uh, yeah, so when I first got here the fall of my freshman year, it was I, I really didn't have like a, a set load that I really liked. And, I mean, I was kind of like on my front foot a little bit. I would like like twist my toe up. And then, I mean, freshman fall, I mean, it wasn't too hot. And then we kind of – I really got in the, in the cage winter and we got like a leg kick, a little leg lift load, and I fell in love with it. I mean, the power started to go up, everything just – and so I fell in love with it. So I changed that to begin with. And then – uh after the leg lift, it was kind of beginning of last year. It was I still had some head movement, like when I would load, my head would come and so come down, and so I kind of tried to seal all that up and like quiet my head while still having the leg lift. I mean, that has helped me tremendously because it's kind of I set my hands, set my load, and then everything else is just straight hands, bat the ball down. But I would yeah. say that's probably the my load has probably been the biggest help and they i mean the coaches here at mercer i mean ever since i got here have been one-on-one anytime i want to hit they've helped me tremendously yeah and guys for those of you who are in the high school process committing pro like wherever you guys are in the recruiting process uh look at a lot of people say you know especially now with the landscape of things these big schools have such an advantage and i think for baseball it's probably the most even disparity in any college sport Oh, no, no. major ones and i think they you know if you guys want to get the most out of at least your freshman maybe sophomore year look at some of these smaller schools like a mercer like these mid-majors that have been putting up numbers because at mercer is one of those schools that have been pumping guys in the bigs like you have them behind you i mean oh yeah there's a there's a wall full of them. that's that was one of the biggest like like draws here i would say i mean they if you look every single year i think we've had a draft pick for like the past 20 years i mean if not multiple i think the the year before i committed they had like five five guys i mean you had like colby thomas yeah. minor league player of the year here i mean he was I mean, for the a's organization but i mean they pump guys in pro ball and that's all for our head coach coach gibson he's he's the man he he's dialed in with pro ball so that was a yeah. big draw here for me of course. And I think that a lot of people now looking at the landscape of college sports, see the big schools and see that that's where the pro draw is, but uh, specifically baseball. I think, uh, you know, as people who know the space, I think it's important to preach that to the young kids because they look at these big schools and, you know, it's harder to get opportunities at some of these big schools. Yeah, I mean, especially now with like the portal and all that stuff. I mean, if you're coming out of high school, I mean, it's just, you got to go where you're wanted and where like, where like, you know, you're going to get in there freshman year, have a chance to make an impact. And luckily that was, me here and it, it worked out great so no of course doubt. and and so now moving into that what was the biggest you know transition from high school to college ball that not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you struggled with obviously you had a great freshman yeah. season so I, I know there's growing pains in every aspect of baseball baseball's a game of failure but something that just stood out to you that was not necessarily difficult but maybe something that you had to adapt to um I guess from high school, going to high school to college, I guess the, uh, I guess the pitching, pitching is always going to get better each level you go up. But I mean, just guys being able to locate here on the Division One level, locate a heater, locate off speed. I mean, that kind of really wasn't, not wasn't big in high school. Like everybody had like either a, a blow by fastball or a good slider. But I mean, here people got like two to three good pitches they can command in the zone. And then that, and I mean, on top of like going straight out of high school into college, I mean, time management's huge. You got to know how to manage your time, like with practice. I mean, you got practice last in four hours, study hall, school, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But I mean, once you get in the groove with it, I mean, the freshman fall is huge. But once you kind of get in the groove with that, it's, I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's a great experience. Yeah. And so now I have a couple questions for you about just the draft process that's upcoming. You know, obviously – I know there's a lot of things that players can't talk about, so I'm not going to get into much of that. But just looking ahead, you know, uh, obviously the season is what comes first. You're focused on that. 
but looking That's ahead, right. what's something that you're looking forward to about this process? And, and, you know, the process has started, but obviously it's just starting and there's a lot more to look forward to, but what's so far something that you've experienced that you like, or that you're looking forward to more of? Um, obviously, I mean, it's just, it's the dream I've been chasing it since I was a kid. So to kind of finally be here at it, I mean, it's like, quote on, I guess, quote unquote draft year. I mean, it's just, it's it's yeah. fun to kind of go through the whole process, like in touch with the scouts, them coming to games, stuff like that. That's awesome. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you worry too much about that, I mean, you're going to get caught up in like, oh, I did this wrong, this wrong. And, and you're worried about who's watching. I mean, you just got to go out and play the game of baseball at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, you come out, me coming out here and trying to win, Win games for us. I think it's going to help me take care of a lot of the the stuff I need to do on the field. But I mean, me coming and try to win games for Mercer. That's kind of the the big goal for this year to begin with. And that says a lot about you off the field as a person, which I want to get into as well. Um, not necessarily for anyone in specific, but for the fans who are watching this, for fans of any team, for anybody, for someone you know, just trying to see who Ty Valley is. But off the field as a person, what are teams? What are people getting out of you? Um, I think they're gonna they're gonna get the one of the hardest working dudes around. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna work hard and chase my dream until I until I literally can't anymore. So I mean, I think that's kind of a big thing. I'm gonna be devoted and focused to like what I need to be focused on when it when I need to focus on it. So I mean, I'm just gonna be all into what I need to be all into. And right now, that's Mercer baseball. So I mean, that's kind of what people get with, with me. It's awesome. So. Now, the last couple of things I want to talk to you about before going into our rapid fire segment is just, you know, moving into the game of baseball at this level, the professional level, it's grueling. It's, uh, you know, especially at a college level where you're having these four hour practices, you have to manage your time and then you're moving into these pro seasons. Just it's game in, game out, double headers, practices, and, and you don't really have much time off. But like you said, Mercer's been a school that has developed players into being able to do this at a quality level. And what's something that, you know, a piece of advice, maybe someone in, that you know in the big, someone that you've been connected to, someone from your draft year in the, out of high school, what's some advice that you've taken and, and some things that you've learned going into this uh, a very important time in your life? Um, yeah, I mean, I would guess I it's kind of cliche, I guess you can say it, but one of the best things I've I've been given is kind of just kind of try to live where your feet are and in life and in, in baseball too. I mean, you can't – me look into like what's going to happen in the draft six, seven months from now, that's not going to do me any good. I just have to keep my head down and work where I'm at right now. But obviously you got to have the end goal in mind at the same time of why you're doing what you're doing. But, uh, I mean, it, you got to – another big thing I've heard from uh, a couple of my buddies that are in minor league systems and uh, at the professional level is just at the end of the day it's still ball. I mean, it's baseball. you got to play it like your hair's on fire, have fun with it. I mean, that's kind of the, the main thing is, is at the end of the day it's ball. Your college ball, high school ball, pro ball, at the end of the day we're, we're playing baseball and we're blessed to play it. So that's kind of – that's what it is, man. Yeah, and it's the best game on earth. It's that's something right. that – you know, we wouldn't trade yeah, that. It, so. it's, the be- it's the best game on earth because just when you think, like, it's like, oh, yeah, man, this is this is going great. It's going great. It'll humble you quick. And that's what I love about it. I mean, it's you, you play it, but there's no, there's the level that you, you try to reach each – I mean, you just can grow every single day and get better at so many different things. So that's, that's what makes baseball awesome, best game on the planet. So with that being said, that's a perfect transition into my next kind of – my last kind of question. And so – not and I don't like to set number of goals uh personally, but you know, they could be number of goals if you have them, but more just I guess attainable goals on the field, off the field as a team, individually. But what are some of the goals that you have going into this year, this season, um, the future? It, it could be anything, but just, you know, some things that you wanna that you wanna share that you think that you can accomplish that you wanna put people on the map to look out for. Oh uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'll start with our with our team here at Mercer. I think we got we've got some really good pieces, and I mean, we just we fell short a little bit in the conference tournament last year, but I think we got some really good pieces coming back from injury this year. I think we're going to be really, really good, and I think uh, we'll have a chance to make a run of the SoCon title. And I hope that everybody can see us in a regional. That's kind of been one of my dreams too, is to put especially this team in another regional. I mean, we've we've done it in. 
I mean, 13, 15, 16, 17, 19, and we kind of hadn't done it in the 2020 era yet, but I would love to do that mm -hmm. this year. And then, I mean, some personal goals. I mean, honestly, I try not to, like, look that too much ahead with that. I just think I don't like getting caught up in the numbers with it. But, I mean, if I go out there and play my game, I'd love to have another good year average-wise. I really want to increase my walks, cut down the strikeouts, get better with that, and then uh, obviously flash and pop. I mean, 20, 25 homers would be great. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the – that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then so, obviously at the end of the day, I would love for, for it to be Mercer or 2024 or 2025 SoCon champ and then me end up getting drafted that the ne next month or whatever. And I hope we – I mean, I hope we go to Omaha, but, I mean, who doesn't? So, that's right. I would love – I would love to see some Mercer baseball down in Omaha. I will be there. I no doubt it, Oh, get, it's going to be – Mercer Baseball in Omaha will be a sight to see. That will be great. content for the ages. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so now we get into our ending segment. We call it rapid fire around here. It's been a while since I've done this, so i got to think of some questions that I want to ask you. But we'll start off with uh, – doesn't have to be the hardest at-bat you've had, but most fun at-bat you've had, whether it's – you know, going against your friend, whether it's going against uh, someone that has your number and, and you've got, you got him back, or, but it could be most fun pitching matchup, I guess. And, and if you have like a specific at bat or moment that you have off of them that you want to talk about. Um, I'm trying to think of a specific guy. I don't know if I have a specific guy. I have a certain at bat. It was last season. I had a, a we were again playing against Seton Hall and I just, I hit two homers and then I came up for my last at bat in that game and it was like a 11 12 pitch at bat three two count and i ended up hitting another homer for the third homer of the game so i think that was that was pretty electric i would say that's probably my most fun at bat because it was battle 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 and i got my pitch he left it up and i hammered it so it was that was probably the most fun at bat for sure i'll have to i'll have to find that and put this put that up on on the side or on yeah, the bottom put that clip up but ooh, that's a that's a good one Three homer game college, you don't see that pretty often. You and you and Christian Moore in some rare company. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> you, you, that's a pretty good company, if you ask me. Yeah. That's Next. Now, all right. Here's you. So, if you had to put together a regional that you'd want to see Mercer play in, mm. pick three other teams and and a host city, or right, well. I mean, we can Mercer can host, but if you had to say, yeah. if you wanted to go somewhere, if you wanted to say somewhere else, if you wanted to say somewhere else, if you guys going in as a conference champion bid, where okay. would you where would you want to play, and, and who would you want in that regional? Man, that's a good one. Well, I think we honestly got a lot of good talent here in Georgia. I think this year, especially, I think uh, all the mid majors here in Georgia are going to be good. I think uh, I think Georgia and Tech are going to be pretty good this year. But if I if it was ideal, just so we could have some like fan base there, I'd probably go. If we're not hosting, I would probably go regional in Athens. Probably throw in, let's say Georgia Tech, Kennesaw State, us as like a one, two, three, four. I think that would be pretty electric. If it was the in all Athens, Georgia, the yeah, all Georgia regional. Four. Because I mean, every time it's in, it's around here, and we all, all the mid majors and the Power Fives here are talented. I think it always ends up like Athens or Atlanta. So I mean. That would be a good one to have five, four Georgia teams in it too. That'd be that'd be fun for sure. That would be that would be fun if it's in Athens. Yeah, Athens. I might have to. I would I would have to text my guys and get yeah, something get, up and come get down here for sure. I'll text. I would if it's in Athens, Trey. If it's in Athens, you're gonna be getting some text from me. Yeah. No, they're gonna we'll be good. That. So that yeah, that'd be that'd be fun. And then would have to, I would have to uh, decide who I'm a guest of there. <laughs> I, could go with that. I said I'd have to decide who I'm a guest of that weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. Hey, we might have to rotate games or something. Be like, hey, you got this one, I got that one. I know, my guys at UGA over there. Yeah, Ooh. I know, I know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll work on it, but I'll definitely show some love. I'll come down and do that. If that happens, book me down in Athens. You guys can – Guarantee yeah. anyone else who asked me to go to a regional, you guys are hooked. I want to see that. Facts, facts. <laughs> I want to see that. So now, hmm, 
Let's see. All right. I can – actually, no, this is embarrassing for me. Either. I was going to say if I face you in a lab at bat, but, like, I don't pitch, and I also don't play baseball anymore. So, like, <laughs> I can touch, like, 75, but it's, like – it's not there. Yeah, it's not man. there. Me and you in a live at bat does not end good. I think you probably take me out of the stadium. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I, I think so too. I think, no doubt, no doubt. Especially if it, we're we'll seventy five, yeah, I'll probably. probably I'll do take it. That one out. Uh, we'll do it. I'll film it. Let's do it. That'll be that'll be some good content. I know there's the what's the things that track the stats if you put it on the knob of the bat you can do it with that and just oh, the, the blast motion thing the blast the, the blast yeah, motion yeah. thing and just just see we could see what the exit velo challenge would look like yeah no doubt i hope I'm, I'm plus 110 there we'll see i have to i might have to get bat bros in on this <laughs> oh that would be a home run derby for the ages i would get my arm would fall off from getting taken out like BP. Yeah, you might need an L screen or something. Who knows? Um, <laughs> that would be brutal. All right, so we're going to do this. Last last rapid-fire question. We have the right. postseason going on right now, the MLB postseason. We have the current score of the Yankee game is 2-2. So the Dodgers are up one nothing. So the Mets just advanced to the LCS. The Tigers are up 2-1. We have some close games here in uh, game three of the, each series, uh, game four of the Dodgers Padres. Sorry. So, what are our uh, predictions here for this World Series? Mm, for the World Series? Ooh. Man, that's good. I, I mean, the, the Yanks, Yanks Dodgers obviously would be. I mean, ideal. I mean, the two. I mean, heavyweights going at it. But yeah. the, the way the Padres are playing right now, I mean, on a heater. Tatis is on another planet. So yeah, I might go Yanks Padres. I've been saying the Pod as a Yankees fan. I've been saying the Padres are the only team that I was really scared of. No, no. I mean, and plus you you saw. I mean, what I mean, if you're in when you go to San Diego too. I mean, it's different i mean it's, it's that crowd is yeah electric. yeah and and they'll answer right back i mean mookie led off the game with a with a homer which is huge for the oh. dodgers he breaks out of his little playoff slump hits a homer that's big for them but and then you I, go six spot or what it was five spot six spot in the next inning and then the dodgers turn around and hit a grand slam i mean it's just it, it was a fun yeah. spot ain't no doubt i mean yeah and and so it's just, I don't know. I, I think the Padres match up better with the Dodgers, and then the Mets. Like, I mean, the Mets are. I mean, low key on a heater too. That's the thing, though. It's just, like in the, the Subway Series, the Subway Series World Series would be fun, but in a playoff atmosphere, I don't care that we got swept this year. I would feel bad when we sweep the Mets. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, cause just because, I mean, uh, yeah, Playoff Subway, atmosphere. Subway Series would be crazy. I, I, if there's a Subway Series, oh, we do can't I, sleep, we I, can't I, sleep on the Tigers, though. I mean, the Tigers are on a, we can't. I, I agree, actually. I, ugh, this is tough. I know. This it is, is so um, tough. Because you got, you got teams that are you got teams that are all like hot and peaking at the same time. That's what makes it so good. Yeah. And it's hard the thing is it's hard for me to say that if the Tigers and if, if anybody gets into a close game like that with the Guardians again, I don't think Class A makes a mistake like that. Which is why I think if the Guardians keep it close, they can somewhat put it together. I don't know. The Tigers uh, are hot. Up call. It really is. It is a tough call. This is, I think, the who's closest your, and most who's, competitive. Who's your World Series pick? Who you got? I had Yankees. Over, I'm a whole. I, I'm, a, I'm also super biased, but yeah, super I had biased, the Yankees you got, over. You got the Yanks over who though? I had the Yankees over the Padres in six. Okay, in six. Okay, I got you. I, I think Judge Yankees, has got to get Judge has got to get back on the heater thing. for sure. That's the thing. It's. Now, I mean, he, he's bad. He's he's, he's dialed, been bad. If he's dialed and back in the heater, that's, the best. that's I would what love I'm to saying. See him like, he's go like back to back, or just like on some yeah, or so. If one of them wake up, 
Like, either one of them, him, Soto, somebody can wake up, maybe. The, Yan- the Yankees got so many weapons, though. I mean, they got Soto, they got Stanton, Judge. I mean, they're – Torres, they're Torres could it. be they're a weapon. Down. That's the I, thing. I, it's just I think I, – I had hope going into the playoffs. Judge didn't hit. Judge hasn't hit. So, my hope is dwindling, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I mean, but Judge, I mean, he's he's a stud. I mean, he's the best player – uh, that's the thing player in the whole world for a, for a time period this year so i mean if he he jumps back on it i mean there ain't no telling. and that's I mean, my I thing think, my opinion if he gets back on a heater i like the yanks if he's back on, i agree the atmosphere in new york he's gonna be back I on com- momentum i think the yanks i completely win. agree but he's also over four with a strikeout tonight uh, but it happens i mean it happens it happens he could wake up he could go Next series to start, I mean, and go first game, game one, three for four with a pump. Two of them. He could. He 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 could. It's just concerning. It's concerning as a Yankee fan when he is <laughs> one for his last – what is this? Nine, 12. He's one for his last 16. I mean, it's concerns obviously there, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it is Aaron It's a Dutch. stretch of baseball. It's a slump. It happens to everyone, I guess. Yeah, right. Facts. I you could put it that way. I hope I, I think if Judge heats up, if Soto can stay stay ready. Just once Judge heats up, I think Soto heats up too. I think they just feed off each other. Oh, they feed off each other. It's so fun to watch, dude. And and so and Wells strikes out for me. Okay. <laughs> but uh yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting. If the Royals don't put the Yankees out, the Yankees can wake up. They got to get past the Royals, and I'm not sure if that happens at this point. I like them to do it. I like I like the I, I do too. But and they got to win two. They got to win two on the road, or something. Because I don't want it to go to game five. No doubt. Yeah, game five. I don't is- trust. I don't trust Rodon in a game five setting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, they if they they need to knock out two on the road, there ain't no doubt. I mean, that would be ideal, the most ideal situation. I think if they knock out if they knock out this game somehow, if they get this game, they need to win tomorrow and just close it off. Oh yeah, they need to, if they win tonight, they need to go ahead and shut it down. Because if they lose if they lose game four on the road, I think where the would game five be in New York? It's in it's in New York, but that's that's a game changer though. I that's mean, a game changer. Game five with it on the line. I like Judge. If it's game five, Judge is going to come unglued on a couple balls and then it yanks. I hope. I hope. But I also just don't want to even get to game five. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to get to game five. And Stanton, and Stanton tonight has been pretty good. I mean, 3 1 now. So if he can work a walk and, and get on for Jazz and Volpe. Hey, Jazz has been playing well, too. Jazz has been playing well. He turned on the other night. Solo like Homer, Stanton, let's Stanton. go. <laughs> let's Come go. On. Oh, I love reaction. What's, the, what's he got? Doubling a pump in this game. Doubling a pump, four twenty to left Ooh. center. Come on. So what's, three, what's, two. what's the score? Three two. Three two Yanks in the top of the eighth. Ooh. That's Ooh. if it wasn't copyright. If it wasn't copyright, I would so just. I would so yeah. put the end of it Start and watch. Right no, I would no. so watch the end of it and put it on the podcast. Otani one run single. Dodgers up two nothing. So what's that? That series is two one, ain't it? Padres, right? That series is two one Padres. So and there might be a tie. There might be a game five in a couple of days in Los Angeles. I would. I like watch game five. I wouldn't mind it. I would not mind watching game five either. But I think the Padres fans might just come unglued in LA. I don't think LA has. I, the Dodgers got their fake tourist fans. No, nah, the no nah, San Diego was different. The other night when San Diego, Dodgers, that's what I'm saying. I think San Diego fans come back to Dodger Stadium unglued if it gets to a game five. And I think Dodgers Tatis play, and I think Tatis plays the villain role perfectly What's if that, it that, happens. That tension they already have, bro. Like with with the with San the Diego stupid Manny LA. Machado. That was. Uh, I oh, like okay. Manny. I don't care. I'm on Manny. I team, team Machado here. Yeah, Manny's different. 
And his drips unmatched too, by the way. I mean, he goes like neon green, Jordan BG's leg guard. I mean, come on, bro. Drips crazy. Mm -hmm. I I completely I completely agree. I think he's one of the swaggiest players in the league. I think Top T's is right there with him. I just... you got Top T. If we had a Yanks Padre, you got Top T, Jazz, Machado. I mean. Swag fest. There ain't no doubt. Uh, yeah. The Padres are the one team that just scare me with everything. I mean, Michael King, like, yeah, no, I, I don't know. Good, right? I mean, they're, this is just. They're on a, they're on a heater. So yeah, sorry. they're on a heater, and the Yankees are on one of those where they get that rest going into the, the series, <laughs> and they're just like, ah, it's off. Hey, Stan just came uh, through that. Stanton came through. Hopefully, you know, the bottom of the lineup can come through and, and do something because we had basic loaded and one out and didn't score with Soto and Judge in the fifth oh. inning. So, you know, it's going to be tough. But with that being said, I might have to go and watch the end of this. Or, yeah, or yeah, we might have sure. to, we might have to, we might have to just cut the camera and I'll share the screen and we can watch the end of this. But yeah, no doubt. I'm going to cut it on in here. Yeah, but with that being said, we're going to out for the pod. So thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure having you. We're going to do this again when I'm not locked into a Yankees playoff game for sure because I'll have you on as many times as you want. And yeah, uh, yeah. If, Mercer, if Mercer plays in the Athens Regional, you know I'll be there. Yeah, I'll see you there. There ain't no doubt. We'll, see, we'll be there. Anything else you want to say to anybody watching? Oh, no, nah, man. Hey, yeah, give give this man a follow. I mean, he's doing a great job covering college baseball right now. I think he's one of the ones on the rise. So, hey, everybody get to it. Thank you. I appreciate it. And as we count it out, Mookie Betts with another one-room single at Dodgers. Go up 3 nothing. Oh! Game 5 is coming. Yeah, game 5. That's all we leave you all with. Hey, you guys will see in the next episode. Actually, you guys will probably see this episode after this series is done. But, uh. Next episode will be, let me think, we will be asking our LCS predictions to Nolan Schubert. We'll see what he has to say. Nolan Schubert. Hey, ask Schubert about our Team Elite days, man. We used to we used to bang back on the Team Elite travel ball days. I will. That'll be the clip that comes up the day I film with Schubert, and we'll bring that's it up on the pod. That's my boy. And but that's, yeah, man, that's I, a, Hey, and that's a perfect way to end this episode. And we'll go watch – we're going to watch the rest of the Yankee games. Yeah, let's go do it.